because there's a big difference between dating someone for seven years and living with them and sharing a home together. And the, um, the law that pertains to you is the Family Law Act. And in the Family Law Act, it defines the word spouse in two locations. In one location, it says a spouse is someone that you're married to. In another location, it says someone that you're married to plus someone that you have lived with or lived together with, they use the word cohabited with, for three years or more. Three years, okay. And then there is another part of that same second definition that says someone that you have a child in common with and that you are in a relationship of some permanence. So if you are living together and you're only together for a year, a year and a half, but you have a child in common, then you're a spouse. If you do not have a child in common and you're living together, you would have to be together for three years or more to trigger the, uh, the definition of spouse. And the definition of spouse, that is what we call the expanded definition. In other words, not just married, but married or living together for three years or more or in, with a child in common. That applies to spousal support. Mm -hmm. so, in other uh, words, a common law spouse, someone that is living together like yourself, Jerry, with your girlfriend for three years or more, would not fall under the part of the Family Law Act that would grant either of you property rights to the other person's property. So for example, if seven years ago you moved in together yes. and you bought furniture and she bought CDs and you bought a car and she started an RSP and then the two of you split up, yes. what's yours is yours, what's hers is hers, for the most part, That's terrific. unless the two of you purchase things jointly, which can get a little dicey. Much like if you and I went into a store together and I gave you five bucks to buy something that was ten dollars, yeah. who's to say who owns it, me or you or both? It boils down to evidence. Who can prove who owns what? And if but, you can't prove it, then it becomes, an, uh, it becomes a debate between the two people. It's not so simple because some people think, well, you know what, there's no property rights between people that are not married. And that's generally true, but there's been a lot of people that have tried to buck that proposition by saying, look, you know what, Jerry bought the house with his money. I lived there for seven years. I painted the walls and did the gardening and I kicked in some money towards maintenance every couple of months. Mm -hmm. So although I'm not the titled owner, my name isn't on title, yeah. I am a part owner of that house because of all the things that I did. And things can get a little dicey there because although it might be easy to say, well, no, I own the home, you move out. Um, in situations like that, it's not uncommon for the person who truly believes they're a part owner to sue and say, look, you know what? I, I am a part owner of that property under different legal doctrines like what's called constructive trust or mm -hmm. resulting trusts, which I'm not going to get into, but there are ways people can actually establish claims to property even though they're not married.